Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Maria De Simone. I'm a professional astrologer, and you can find out more about me and my work over at insightfulastrology.com, where I can uh, offer you a consultation. You can do my classes. So many other astrology-related products are there on my website, so go check it out. Today's video is going to be a bear of a presentation. So let me just say that from the beginning, this is going to be an in-depth educational astrology video on predictive astrology that does require you to be a more intermediate to advanced student of astrology to learn from and to benefit from. Even if you are not at that level in your astrological studies, I hope that this video sparks you and inspires you to want to learn more astrology. That is the whole purpose of my channel. It is to inspire you to really see the magnitude, the power, the beauty of astrology and how much it has to offer us as a tool for self-development, personal growth, and yes, prediction. Astrology's greatest strength is prediction, in my opinion. So the focus of this video is going to be on an ancient time lord technique called annual perfections. And to my knowledge, there isn't a video out there that is going to be as in-depth as this in terms of an instructional video where you can really learn how to put annual perfections into practice. Uh, there are instructional videos for, from schools and from classes, of course, and, and webinars and workshops, but a free YouTube video like this, let me tell you, this is going to be gold for those of you who want to learn how to really work with perfections effectively. And so I'm going to break down this video in a few different parts. First, I'm going to talk about what annual perfections are and how they can be relevant as a tool in your predictive toolbox. Then I am going to take you through a very long autobiography of annual perfections and years in my own life history. And I'm going to demonstrate how the chart is brought to life and the specific events that are promised potentially to happen can be triggered and do actually occur and I'm going to also show you how to use the annual perfections with transits to tighten up your predictive analysis so that you can determine whether or not any particular year is going to be more positive, more challenging, and even hone in on the specific subjects that are likely to happen because every house rules more than one topic. And finally, the last part of this video is going to be a five-year prediction. Uh, so I'm going to look five years ahead with you at my chart to give you an idea of how an astrologer will use the perfections with the transits to make predictions. So it'll be an, a five-year outlook, but it's also going to be us going around that wheel almost twice, I, I wanna say, so that you can really see the power of annual perfections and how they come to life. So like I said, this is going to be a bear of a video. You're probably gonna to wanna to get really comfortable and watch this in more than one sitting if you don't have enough time. So make sure that you bookmark it, save it, click the like button, all of that. And just know before I get started, if you resonate with this style of me teaching and presenting information, really encourage you to take one or more of my astrology classes because I do offer very personalized astrology classes, in-depth personalized mentorship, which is a dying art in the astrological community, unfortunately. And not a lot of astrologers are still the person who is actually teaching you, the student, and supporting you on that individual level. And I'm really proud to say that the Insightful Astrology School continues to do that. And that is my main mission as an astrologer and as your astrology teacher. So when you are in one of my classes, we're using your birth charts for the homework assignments, for the lesson plans. And it really helps bring the astrology to life. 
The reason why I'm using my birth chart for this video is because quite frankly, the amount of research that I had to do to prepare for this video was so intense. I would not have been interested enough in another person's life, whether it was a celebrity or somebody else to do this amount of research. So I am able to teach you more effectively by using my own birth chart because I'm the one having that lived experience. So I hope you don't mind the indulgence of me using my own birth chart for these teaching purposes. Okay. So now that my little introduction is out of the way, let's talk about what annual perfections are. And by the way, you may know this about me. I consider myself a modern astrologer. And yet I am talking about a traditional technique in this video. So even though I have <laughs> my training began as a modern astrologer, psychological astrologer, modern predictive astrologer, over the years, I have come to appreciate and learn more about ancient traditional techniques. And I'm really enjoying the process of integrating them and creating my own system as an astrologer and a predictive astrologer around my own personal integration of these techniques. And that's what we all end up doing as astrologers. We all end up learning as much as we can, studying, and then we go off on our own and we develop our own way of using the information that we've learned. So I am trying to share my wisdom with you, my way of doing this. And I have been doing astrology successfully for about 20 years. And I am considered a very accurate predictive astrologer. So I want to share this art with you. And I really hope that some of you are inspired to learn it on, on this in-depth level. So what you're going to find is that because this is an ancient Hellenistic technique, for the most part, we are going to stick with that tradition. And the tradition of Hellenistic astrology is to use the whole sign house system, which is uh, not the house system that I use in my daily practice. In my daily practice, I use the Placidus house system, which is a quadrant house system. But we are, we, in order to properly use the Hellenistic techniques, we have to use the whole sign house system. So we're going to use the whole sign house system, and we are going to focus on the traditional planets. So there will be a very limited use of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto at the outset. However, having said that, I am going to then backtrack and show you how in certain perfection years, you can really see the astrology pop out even if you're using the Placidus house system and if you are integrating the outer planets. So there will be different points in this video where I show you that, but I have to say primarily in order to, especially when you're first learning this technique, please, you must use the whole sign house system stick to just the traditional planets and tighten up your learning there before you go and branch out on your own in the way that I'm going to show that I have in certain years. So, okay, let me just make sure that I have finished what I wanted to cover in my little introduction. And so I'm going to show you, oh, the other thing is there is, a concept called sect in ancient Hellenistic astrology. And that can become important when you are looking at your annual perfections. So you want to determine whether you have a, what's called a day chart or a night chart. And this video is not going to get into all of that. It's fairly simple to do. You can Google it. Uh, maybe I'll do another video on that at some point, but you have to determine if you have a day chart or a night chart, because then what you will be able to see is, well, which planet in your chart wants to do the most good in general, and which planet in your chart can potentially do the most harm. So if you have a day chart where the sun is above the horizon, then theoretically, Jupiter can be the greatest benefit for you and do the greatest good. And in terms of the malefic, Saturn and Mars, 
Saturn can be the most constructive for you, whereas Mars can be the most destructive for you in your birth chart and looking at transits. If you have a night chart, then the sun is below the horizon. And that means that you're of the lunar sect. And, the, and so your, your moon, the moon is your leader instead of the sun, okay? If you're a day chart, the sun is your leader. If you're a night chart, excuse me. <clears throat> if you're a night chart, the moon is your leader. And that means that Venus is your insect benefic and can do the greatest good. And <clears throat> Saturn becomes the out of sect malefic that can do the greatest harm whereas Mars is the most constructive malefic in general for people who have a night chart. And that's something that you wanna consider because when you get to your perfections and you're looking at them, when those particular planets are triggered, really important things can happen, okay? Okay, and finally, the last point that I'm gonna make is that while annual perfections can be a really impressive standalone technique to look at, to see kind of like a snapshot picture of your year ahead, they become really impressive when used in conjunction with transits. So I'm going to show that to you. Okay, now I've got my introduction out of the way. Let's get comfy cozy and get into this because we are gonna do some serious learning today. Uh, annual perfection, an ancient time lord technique. What does a time lord technique even mean? Well, your birth chart is also known as the natal promise. And in your birth chart, there is so much significant personalized energy and potential. But that potential, even though it's there in your birth chart for your whole life, not everything in your birth chart is active at once. There are different predictive techniques that allow us to see when something in your birth chart is going to be woken up or activated, thus triggering potential life events to occur in your world. So a time lord technique like annual perfections will focus on one area of your chart, one planet, and what that particular area means for you at any given time. And with annual perfections, we are looking at this from year to year. So from your birthday one year to your birthday the next year, that is one full perfection year. My birthday is May 8th. So May 8th begins my new annual perfection year until the following May 8th. And then I start the next year, okay? Now I'm gonna show you a wheel, a perfections wheel so that you can see this and you can Google this. These are all over the, the internet, but hopefully you can see uh, on, your, on the screen that what we're looking at is a wheel of a birth chart that is <clears throat> that has the 12 houses and then all of these outer rims, those numbers are ages, okay? So when you are born, so the, the year I was born, May 8th, 1974 to May 8th, 1975, that would have been zero. And then, after my first, my first birthday would be one, two, three, all around the chart. And then after 11, see where at, we start from 12 and we go to the next rim and so on and so forth. So whenever you're born, and this is for everybody, everybody born starts their life in what is known as a first house perfection year. Then you go around and everybody who is 12 years old goes back to this first house perfection year. You see the ascendant here, that's the first house. 
When you're 24, you will go back to having a first house perfection year. When you're 36, when you're 48, when you're 60, all of those ages for every single one of us will be a first house perfection year. A second house perfection year for everybody will be the ages of 1, 13, 25, 37, 49, 61. Third house perfection year, 2, 14, et cetera. And so you can see how we go around the wheel to determine what perfection year we're in at any given time. This is important. You have to figure out what perfection year you're in. That is where the similarities end. Because even though all of us in our 32nd year of life will be in a ninth house perfection year, we all have a very different ninth house story. What happens is when you're in a certain perfection year, the topics that rule that house are activated. They are woken up for better or for worse. And we'll determine which one it is a little bit later. Not only are the topics of that house woken up, but the sign on the cusp of that house is ruled by a planet. That planet in your chart for that perfection year is also woken up. In addition, if you happen to have any planets in the house of your perfected year, those planets are woken up. So you can see how quickly this technique will become dynamic and personalized for everyone. I'm going to show my birth chart now so that you can see this in practice before I start to demonstrate the perfections and the history of life events to, to teach you this. Okay, so let me show you my birth chart. And this happens to be my birth chart using the Placidus house system, but I'm gonna switch it in a minute to whole sign. I just wanna orient you because in the Placidus house system, my planets are in different houses, okay? So in the Placidus house system, I have Venus in the 12th house. I have the sun and Mercury in the first house. I have Saturn and Mars in the third house. I have Pluto in the sixth. I have Neptune moon in the eighth. You're gonna see that that changes when we go to the whole sign house system. And this is what's fascinating about astrology. Both of these house systems work. I am adamant about that. I use them both with great success. But when you're using an ancient time lord technique, a Hellenistic technique, you have to be true to that art and go with the whole sign house system. Again, I'm gonna show you that the Placidus house system can also work, but that's something that you will not be playing around with until you are very advanced and very comfortable analyzing annual perfections using the whole sign system, okay? So now let's see my chart in the whole sign house system. And you'll see it, it, my ascendant is 24 degrees, 42 minutes. That's gonna stay the same. The angles of my chart are gonna stay the same, but it looks different once you're in the whole sign house system. So now this is my chart in the whole sign house system. And it, it almost looks like a different chart, but it's not, it's my chart, <laughs> excuse me. So the first thing that you'll notice is that the ascendant and the midheaven degree become what, what are known as floating degrees in the whole sign house system. They can be, uh, the midheaven can be in the 10th house, the ninth house, sometimes the 11th house. The ascendant is always going to be in the first house. The rising sign in the whole sign house system becomes zero degrees of whatever sign your ascendant is in. So this is where it gets different. So even though in the Placidus house system, I had the ascendant here at the first house cusp and the whole sign house system, the your ascendant sets up the signs that are going to be on each house cusp and then you start from zero degrees of that sign and you go around the wheel. And that is why I have zero degrees Aries here 
beginning my chart at the first house cusp, but that is different from the ascendant degree itself. The ascendant degree is still 24 degrees, 42 minutes of Aries. This is also the reason why all of a sudden Venus is moved into the first house in my whole sign chart. And it is why the sun and Mercury are moved into the second house of my whole sign chart and why Saturn and Mars are moved into the fourth house, why Pluto's moved into the seventh and why moon, Neptune, North node are moved into the ninth house. Okay, it is for this reason, because every house cusp becomes zero degrees of that sign. And it is a cleaner way to look at an astrology chart, for sure, because you don't have intersections and uh, confusion. You don't have house, houses that can range from like 22 degrees to 48 degrees. You don't have that with the whole sign house system. It all becomes neatly packaged into every house is 30 degrees period, end of story. And that does make it a little easier. But the Placidus house system, which is a quadrant house system and, and mathematically calculated differently, works just as well. But again, for the annual perfections, we need to use the whole sign house system. Because if we are using a quadrant house system that allows interceptions, it gets very messy and very confusing. Plus, in the quadrant house systems, we can have situations where the house cusp is one sign, and then we have planets that are in a different sign in the house. So that really can confuse your analysis in the beginning of your study. For example, in my Placidus chart, <laughs> the sixth house is still ruled by Mercury. However, in my Placidus chart, Pluto and Libra is in my sixth house. So you can see how that's going to really confuse your analysis when you're trying to look at annual perfections and figure out what's woken up in the birth chart. Okay. So please trust me when I tell you, we must use the whole sign house system for uh, annual perfections and uh, other ancient time war techniques like zodiacal releasing. But we're not going to focus on the outer planets as much. Yet they work. And you will see when we get to the transits using them together, it gets very impressive. Okay, so let's start this little tour of how to work with perfections. And I'm going to start with the first house just to kind of keep it symmetrical, I guess, <laughs> just to keep it easy. And so you're going to see that I'm skipping around in ages because of that. I actually started this tour that I'm going to give you from the age of 20, and I'm going to be 50 in uh, May. <laughs> so you're going to get a lot of learning right now, okay? And I will try to keep each of my explanations on the brief side and just get to the point so that you can get to the learning. Okay, so whenever... I personally am in a first house perfection year. The sign Aries becomes activated. So topics of the first house become activated and any planets that are in the first house become activated, which in this case, I have Venus. And the sign Aries is ruled by Mars. So Mars becomes activated in a first house perfection year for me as well. And that pulls in fourth house significations, potentially, right? For any first house perfection year. Because the chart ruler and the ascendant chart ruler is a physical body point. Keep in mind that when you're in a first house perfection year, your ruling planet of your ascendant can bring in significations of physicality, health or physical situations. And the first house itself correlates to the physical self. It is your identity, your personality. It is where the soul enters the body. So because of that, it does become a physical body point. So whenever you're in a first house perfection year, 
all of those first house topics are woken up to become dominating that particular year of your life. And any planets in your first house are woken up for better or for worse. And any, uh, your chart ruler, your ascendant ruler is woken up as well. Okay, so for me, again, we're looking at first house, Venus and Mars. And when I say we're looking at first house, Venus and Mars, keep in mind, we have to also consider what these planets are doing natally. So natally, their relationship happens, they happen to be square each other. So they happen to be in an aspect to each other. Okay, Mars is my insect malefic. So it's my most constructive malefic. And Venus is my insect benefic. So it's supposed to be my most constructive benefic, but Venus is in her detriment. Mars is in its fall. There is something called reception here, which strengthens the, the energy here, um, strengthens Venus's ability to at least talk to Mars in a constructive way. Uh, but Venus in my chart is also making a square to Saturn. And Saturn is my out of sex malefic. Mars and Saturn are co-present. So a first house year, first house perfection year for me, just looking at my recipe before we get into anything else, we can see that in general, this could be a very good year for me in terms of first house matters, Venus matters and personal identity, physical matters, but not without some stress. Mars does make a beautiful trine to Jupiter in my 12th house and Jupiter is in her domicile. And Saturn also makes that trine. So Jupiter is known as, Jupiter is actually overcoming Saturn and Mars which means Jupiter is helping my Saturn and Mars bring forth the very best of their significations and, and allows them to be very constructive, much more so than some other people's being, uh, Mars or Saturn placements. It's every chart's unique. So Venus is also overcoming Saturn here, but there is a, a difficult situation where Saturn is actually doing something back to Venus and it's called a striking array, hurling array at Venus. And that's very damaging, actually. It's very damaging. So that has to be considered as well. But this, what I just did was analyze the natal promise. Okay, I didn't even get to the predictions or how something can manifest. But in general, for me with first house matters, Everything that I just explained to you, basically in a nutshell, suggests that overall, the first house perfection years for Maria will be positive, but not without stress. And so keep that in mind when we talk about what happened during my actual first house perfection years. So I'm going to take you through three of them, actually the age of 24, the age of 36, and the age of 48. In my first house perfection year, when I was 24 years old, that was the year 1998, I became pregnant that year with my first child. That is very symbolic of the significations of this first house perfection year for me. Why? Well, let's go back to the fact that we're talking about the first house, which is your physical body. So my physical body changed as a result of my first pregnancy. Mars in Cancer is the ruler of my first house and it's in my fourth house. So my physical body changed because I was starting a family. Literally, Mars in Cancer in the fourth house. Could not be more literal. And obviously your physical body changes when you're pregnant. So that was the first house changes. And this was considered a very happy event. Venus is there 
I was so happy when I was pregnant with my son. It was like the best pregnancy. And even though that, uh, you know, takes a toll on your body and all of that, this was overall a positive perfection year for me. I was feeling really good, really happy. I was pregnant with my first child. Uh, it took me a while to get pregnant. So I did not start the perfection year pregnant. I uh, started trying to get pregnant at that time. And it took a good six to seven months before I got pregnant. And I was young. I was 24 at the time. So that could be considered the hardship, if anything. But it was mild, right? Because I successfully got pregnant. So that was one perfection year. That was the age of 24 in 1998. Then let's actually, you know what? I think what I'm going to do is go in chronological order because that makes more sense with my, with like the life story. Sorry. Okay. So I just changed my mind mid video. So that's, that's the first house perfection year. So after I'm pregnant the next year at age 25, 1999, I go into my second house perfection year. So here I am, second house, second house topics are activated. Money, your earnings, your livelihood, and any planets that are in the second house would be activated. So the sun and Mercury, now this gets very busy, so bear with me. The sun rules my fifth house of children. Mercury rules my sixth house of health, illness. It also rules my third house of neighborhood and communication. And Venus is the ruler of my second house. Venus is in the first house. So any second house perfection year for me, in addition to topics of livelihood, money, talents and abilities, all the second house matters being woken up, we have to also consider the sun, Mercury and and Venus's placements. Okay, so again, very very nuanced and in depth, right? So when I was had my first child in 1999, so I was pregnant in 98, gave birth when I was 25, 99, and there you go with the sun in the as the ruler of the fifth house. The um, that pregnancy, I, I had my son, but he ended up being an emergency C-section. And I took a long time to recover from that. And then I had some postpartum depression after. And that explains the sixth house energy, Mercury coming out in that way with the mind and the depression. That explains that. The son, literally, I gave birth to my son. And it as far as second house topics by themselves, I, my career as a mother began. Okay. So I quit working for money and I became a stay at home mom. So that occurred during that year. Okay. So then I actually want to backtrack. I actually want to backtrack because what I was supposed to do is tell you about the transits. Uh, you can see though, that without even looking at transits, we're pretty accurate. We're being pretty accurate. And so back when I was pregnant in my first house perfection year, the active transits that were occurring at that time, it was pretty interesting. So transiting Saturn was conjunct my ascendant when I first became pregnant, but then it moved into Taurus when I first started my perfection year, sorry. When I first, um, and I was very happy that year, even though I had Saturn on my ascendant, Saturn on my ascendant was giving me structure and turning me into a mother and giving me that responsibility. But I was really happily nesting uh, and moving into my newly renovated home at that point. So transiting Neptune was sextile Venus at that time. So Venus was happily activated. 
right? A planet in my first house was happily activated. Uh, transiting Pluto was in a close trine to Venus. So Venus was very well supported the year I got pregnant and transiting Jupiter did conjunct Venus in March of 99 and would have entered Aries in uh, mid-February. So we had Jupiter here as well. So those were the transits that were happening. And so again, I mentioned those transits and you can see that for the most part, they are very supportive transits. So the pregnancy, I said that year was very positive and it would have been because the corroborating transits, even though Saturn passed over my ascendant, the other transits that related to my first house were all very positive and supportive that year, okay? You must consider this, guys, when you are analyzing and making predictions. So then that um, when I had my son, the transits that were active were still, now Venus was still the ruler, right? So Venus is still important. The sun and Mercury become important as well. So when I actually gave birth to my son, Neptune was still sextile Venus. Transiting Uranus was square my son and transiting Saturn was conjunct my son when I had my child. Jupiter did enter Taurus back and forth and, and that becomes a little protective. But you can see now how the tone of this perfection year becomes more dire and more difficult because a planet in the second house received stress. Saturn was conjunct and Uranus was square. That is difficult energy. And that actually very much can explain the, the difficulty of uh, the childbirth experience, him almost dying, me almost dying, and the, the aftermath of that, okay? So that's a first house and a second house perfection story. Third house, moving forward in life, we have when I was 26, I would have entered my first third house perfection year. And this was the age two, the, the age 26, but the year 2000. So a third house perfection year is gonna wake up third house topics, which is communication, siblings, neighborhood, neighbors. Mercury is the ruler of my third house. So Mercury's significations become woken up and important as well. And in the year 2000, that just happened to be a year where I spent a lot of time with my sister, third house sibling, because we both had young babies, six months apart, and I was trying to come out of that postpartum depression that I told you about. And the transits that perfection year were Saturn was then conjunct Mercury, the ruler of my third house. And that is an aspect of very serious mind, potential depression. Transiting Uranus was also square Mercury that year. So it was a rather difficult year as I was in postpartum depression and was trying to come out of it. And I, and I did come out of it. It took about uh, eight months after my son was born. So he was born in August of 99 and I was in this full postpartum depression for a good eight months, which took me into that third house perfection year. And Jupiter eventually made a conjunction to Mercury, which amplified that third house energy. Okay, so you can see the themes of the third house just coming to life, guys. It's, it's amazing. I hope that you're getting this. I hope that you're getting impressed with this energy. So now let's move on to a fourth house perfection year. Now things get pretty interesting. Look at my fourth house, guys. I have both malefics in the fourth house. That should alert you to something. Even though those malefics are making a beautiful link to Jupiter, Jupiter is overcoming them. They're still malefics and they're woken up 
for me in a fourth house perfection year in a very profound way. So the moon is the ruler of my fourth house. So what is also woken up is my ninth house moon in Sagittarius. My fourth house perfection years have really been quite challenging overall. And yet I was always saved. There was always some kind of a miracle or some kind of being saved. So in 2001, when I entered this perfection year, I was 27 years old. And I happened to be pregnant with my daughter, but my daughter, there were tests that indicated uh, spina bifida. There were tests that indicated after the spina bifida was ruled out that she would have some significant developmental disabilities. And I had to be, we chose to keep the pregnancy. And because of that, they put me on full bed rest for my entire pregnancy, starting on about at about the fifth month, fifth to, uh, between five and a half and six months of pregnancy. I was on complete bed rest. So I'm in my fourth house perfection year and I'm isolated to home, quite literally bed rest. That is so literal for this fourth house perfection year. I gave birth to my daughter that year and she ended up being a miracle baby. She ended up being absolutely perfect. It was, uh, it, it was amazing uh, that she, the doctors were convinced that she was going to have a disability and she had no disability. And I do believe that Jupiter here provided that energy for the miracle. So you can see also how my moon, which rules my fourth house, lives in my ninth house. And one of the things the ninth house rules is religion, divination. And so I had uh, significant prayer groups going on at that time that year. I had uh, people praying for miracles and I, I, I had relics. I had religious relics given to me to wear and certain ceremonies that I would perform on a daily basis, praying for this miracle of my child to be born healthy. And I thought that was very interesting that that came out in that perfection year. Okay, so that's my fourth house perfection year. Now let's move on to a fifth house perfection year. So for me, a fifth house perfection year is going to involve the sun because Leo is on the cusp there. So not only is the fifth house topic woken up, fifth house children, sex, creative self-expression, that's woken up, but matters connected to the sun are woken up for me as well. So in 2002, I was very busy raising two children, literally fifth house perfection year. And the only corroborating transit that year was that Jupiter entered Leo on August 1st. So Jupiter goes into my fifth house. That year, I was so busy raising babies, but I felt like I needed something more. And I had always wanted to be a writer. So I had a strong creative drive stimulated that year. And I, in fact, wrote a novel that year. So it was a, a fiction. It was a family saga. It was a novel that just came out of me. It was like it was channeled out of me. I wrote this book. I would get up at 4, 4.30 in the morning before I had to do anything with the kids and write for about an hour every day. And so I wrote this book during that perfection year. And I thought that was interesting for 2002. Okay, so now let's move on to my sixth house perfection year. And remember guys, your perfection years are gonna be very detailed and specific for you. Everything that I'm saying is just for me because of my chart. Your chart looks very different. So sixth house perfection year, the sixth house connects to illness, work, daily routine. Mercury would be involved because Virgo's on the cusp of my sixth house. So matters connected to Mercury are also woken up. So when I was in, when I was 29 years old, in my first sixth house perfection year that I'm talking to you about in 2003, 
As I was working on the craft of writing, I was editing this book that I had written in my fifth house perfection year. And I kept trying to get my book published very unsuccessfully. That year, when I was 29 in my sixth house perfection year, I also found my calling in life, astrology. And I began a serious course of study. I started studying astrology and entered a, I enrolled in my first certification class actually that year, in the year 2003. So the transits that were active that year, Jupiter entered Virgo and my sixth house on August 28th and was in close trine to natal Mercury, which is the ruler of my sixth house. Uh, it went retrograde within two degrees of being trine. And Mercury was also retrograde that year in my sixth house. Now, some astrologers feel that when you're in a perfection year ruled by a planet, that then by transit goes retrograde that year, that retrograde becomes very important for you. And I tend to agree with this because I, I noticed this in my own analysis. So not every Mercury retrograde will be important for everybody. This Mercury retrograde period, however, would have been significant for me because Mercury was the ruler of my sixth house and Mercury went retrograde in my sixth house. And what was I doing? I was trying to edit this book and get it published. And I was not successful with that. I worked on the craft of writing and polished myself up as a writer. But then I reoriented my mind and what I wanted to study. And I started to study astrology. So that was very much reflected by those transits. Okay. Now let's look at a seventh house perfection year. Seventh house is the topic of marriage and partnership. And don't assume that just because you're in a seventh house perfection year, you're gonna get married or you're gonna get divorced. It's more complicated than that. But there could be a significant situation that year, either with a spouse or partner in their own life or connected to your actual relationship. My seventh house is very interesting because this is the first time that I'm going to introduce an outer planet. And I have, I feel like I have to, because I feel like it is relevant. The planet Uranus in my chart is exactly on the descendant. See how my ascendant is 24 degrees, 42 minutes. That means the descendant angle, the seventh house cusp itself has Uranus conjunct, even though the seventh house in the whole sign house system starts at the zero degrees. Uranus is conjunct my descendant. Venus is the ruler of my seventh house of marriage partnership. And so even though I'm telling you guys in the beginning of your study to not integrate the outer planets because it can be a little confusing at first, in this case, the planet Uranus tends to be very loud and dominant because it is angular. So I am going to integrate that. So let's talk about the first, uh, 2004. So 2004 was actually an amazingly positive year of my marriage. Uh, I was 30 years old and my husband took me for, uh, on an amazing, almost, I think it was almost three weeks, a luxury cruise line, luxury. We're not talking about the commercial cruises. We're talking about a small luxury cruise line, which was a very expensive vacation to the Mediterranean. So we took a Mediterranean cruise that year and there was a lot of money and success for my husband that year. Okay, so you see sometimes a seventh house perfection year is about the other person actually. So for him, Venus, the ruler, there was a lot of money and success. There was a lot of happiness for me because I benefited from that. I had a very happy year in general of our marriage. And so all I had transit wise that year was Jupiter in the seventh house. And there was a solar eclipse in my seventh house in October. And so even though natally I have 
a difficult seventh house because Uranus is on the cusp and Venus is making that square to both Saturn and Mars, right? Very difficult setup for Venus, for a Venus ruled house here. And Pluto would be in it if you, if you count Pluto as well. That particular perfection year, because I only had positive transits, the year of my seventh house perfection year, it ended up being super positive. You're gonna see every year has to be judged differently. It doesn't mean every seventh house year will be positive. Natally, at what was activated could have been very negative and difficult and hard, but I had too much support that year to my seventh house. Okay, eighth house perfection year. Now, eighth house can be a dark house for some people, right? The eighth house rules shared resources, partners' money, big money. It also rules uh, trauma, crisis, and surgery, surgeons. Okay, so this is all eighth house energy. Death can be a part. It doesn't mean that somebody's going to die every time you're in eighth house perfection year. That actually is not the case. Um, but eighth house matters are going to be woken up. And for me, Mars is the traditional ruler. And there we have Mars and Cancer in the fourth house. So for my eighth house perfection year, fourth house matters can be woken up, plus whatever the eighth house symbolizes itself. And so in 2005, so we go from this really happy year in 2004 to 2005. Now, back when I had my son, in 1999, I told you he was in an emergency C-section. So I was trying to actually give birth naturally. And as I was pushing him, he stopped breathing and had a cord compression. So my doctor had to perform what's known as an emergency C-section, a crash section. And because I didn't have an epidural and I was giving birth naturally, I had to be knocked out. Uh, so I had to be knocked out with anesthesia and when it's not a scheduled C-section, it is not that neat little uh, cut. It's, it's, they gut you, okay? You are gutted like a fish. I was cut this way and this way and because they have to get the baby out. It's life or death. After I think 90 seconds, there could be severe problems, even death. So he had to act fast. I was gutted like a fish. And part of the result of that Thank God I had a healthy baby. He saved my baby's life, but my body was physically uh, deformed. So I always had security issues about my stomach since then. Well, I kept trying to convince my husband at the time to let me have a tummy tuck surgery to fix it. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it. But that year, so interesting. That year, my, uh, we were at home having pizza with my brother and my sister-in-law. And, and I, it was another one of those conversations where I was trying to convince him to do it, to let me do it. And I showed my stomach to my brother and my sister-in-law and they managed to convince my, my husband to accept that this was really important to me. And he paid for the surgery and I got the surgery done in my eighth house perfection year. So at the time, transiting Uranus was making a trine to Mars when I when I had that surgery uh, in 2005. I just want to double check that, and make sure I said that right. Yes, transiting Uranus was in Pisces, and it would have been, and it it was here. So transiting Uranus was somewhere here in my twelfth house. Isolation, hospitalization, healing, right? Trine Mars in my fourth house. So I had a surgery, quite literally, that healed me, my uh, scars and, and um, some psychological issues that I had, right? The surgery really helped, healed and helped to give me more confidence. And that was the eighth house perfection year in 2005. And now let's go to a ninth house perfection year. So in the ninth house perfection year, what you're going to expect to be activated is a ninth house topic. Ninth house is academic higher education. It is religion, 
spiritual studies and divination. It is also connected in modern astrology to publishing, broadcasting your, your message, okay? So ninth house matters are woken up. For me, I have the moon in the ninth house. We can forget about Neptune. We don't have to integrate it because it's an outer planet. Moon is there, Neptune's there, North Node's there. Yes, that's all there. But the ruler of my ninth house becomes Jupiter because Sagittarius is on the cusp of the ninth house. So in my ninth house perfection years, everything in my ninth house will be activated. Ninth house topics will be activated and Jupiter and everything that Jupiter promises in my chart is activated in every ninth house perfection. Year. So in 1994, how old was I in 1994? I would have been... 20. Okay. Yeah. That was the, that was the first perfection year that I started with actually. So I would have been 20 years old in 1994. And that year I got into graduate school for social work. And it was a very competitive program back then Hunter school of social work in Manhattan. It was very difficult to get into. And I got a place at, at, at this, uh, in, in this program, but I, kind of settled because I wanted my PhD in clinical psychology and I was 20 years old. And that year, between that year and the next year, I ended up getting engaged and decided that I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And so I didn't want to go through all of the schooling that would be required to get a PhD in psychology. So I kind of downgraded my career path and I said, well, social work requires less schooling. Let me do social work instead. But what happened was when I got into graduate school and I actually started in that perfection year, I was very unhappy. I didn't like what I what I had to, to do in the coursework. I didn't like all the red tape and the paperwork and everything. I just wanted to counsel people. So the transits that were happening that year, interestingly enough, is that Saturn was transiting Saturn was square my moon. And the difficulties there, the challenges between my higher education pursuits versus my domestic pursuits were in such great conflict that year. And Pluto entered my ninth house that year. And Jupiter, of course, entered the ninth house as well. Or for me, Jupiter transits seemed to follow around my perfection years. So that was, that was the transit energy. Of that year. Very, very interesting. I, I thought, I thought, okay. So now moving on, the next year would have been a 10th house perfection year. 10th house perfection years are all about career, reputation, possibly a parent. It is also about your, um, your status as a person and you can have status changes in a 10th house perfection year. So that I was 21 years old. And in my ninth house perfection year, I knew that I was going to be getting engaged. But it was my 10th house perfection year uh, when I actually got engaged. And I quit school that year. So I got into the program, started the program, but I quit the program in my 10th house perfection year. 10th house perfection year is ruled by Saturn for me. And Saturn is right there in my fourth house, again, I quit. I, I quit a career path, quite literally, that year, left it behind because of wanting to pursue a family. Very, very literal. So after the 10th house perfection year, we go into an 11th house perfection year. And with an 11th house perfection year, you are going to see energy woken up connected to 11th house matters, which is friends, alliances, groups, situations like that, and potentially your greatest hopes and dreams. So for me, Saturn rules the 11th house, just like the 10th house. And here is Saturn in the fourth house. And we would expect, because Saturn is my out of sect malefic, it could turn into a, a bit of a difficult situation depending on what other transits were happening. So in, when I was 22 years old, my biggest dream 
when I was 22 years old and having my 11th house perfection year was to get married sooner. Because even though I got engaged when I was 21, our wedding was going to be like two and a half years away. I really, really, really wanted it to be sooner. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It was supposed to be 1998, the wedding. That was the original date. Well, 11th house's greatest hopes, wishes, and dreams, right? My greatest hope at that time was to get married immediately, earlier. And so in that perfection year, what suddenly happened is my husband, my, my soon-to-be husband, agreed to move up the date. It was very spontaneous. It happened very quickly. And all of a sudden, that date was moved up to 1997. And I was very busy planning a wedding in my 11th house perfection year. So I also got a job at a group home working with autistic children and then later autistic adults. So everything 11th house really got fulfilled. I started working in group homes, teaching children and then adults with autism. I got a dream come true and the dream come true happened very suddenly. If you consider the modern ruler of the 11th house, it takes us back to Uranus. Uranus is on my descendant. Who suddenly made my dream come true? It was my soon to be husband. He suddenly decided, let's move the wedding up. Very, very interesting. So you see, outer planets do play a role. They can be worked into this, but you want to stick with the uh, traditional planets until you have a good handle on how to then integrate. So now let's look at a 12th house perfection here. So this perfection year was, a lot of people get afraid of their 12th house perfection years because the 12th house is woken up and the 12th house is isolation. The 12th house is really a, a, a house of sorrow, potentially. It can be illness and you're, you're convalescing, you're healing. It is a lot of anxiety and, and psychological stuff. Hidden things can happen. So some not so great things can befall you that have a toll on your emotional and spiritual health, depending on what your 12th house is doing. My 12th house, the 12th house is the 12th house, but my 12th house is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is in its sign of domicile in the 12th house. And there is a certain amount of protection for me every time I enter into a 12th house perfection year even though you will see I had some really difficult things happen in a 12th house perfection year. But this particular perfection year, in 1997, I did not have one difficult thing happen to me. As a matter of fact, I got married. So this is the part in my presentation where I, for the first time, I have to introduce the possibility that the Placidus chart, your Placidus chart can also work. The year that I got married, the transits that were happening, okay? So Neptune would be the modern ruler if you consider the outer planets. And the transits that happened when I got married is Pluto was close to a conjunction with my natal Neptune. So you could say that's that's waking up some uh, 12th house energy, but their transiting Jupiter entered my 12th house and I ended up having what's known as a Jupiter return by March of 1998. That happens once every 12 years for all of us. There was also an eclipse in Pisces uh, in the 12th house. There was two, one a lunar on September 16th and a solar on February 26th that was conjunct my natal Jupiter. So this is all relatively positive energy, but in my opinion, none of that explained my marriage. So this is a curious perfection year. It was very, very fortunate, extremely fortunate because I got married. Now the Jupiter manifestation was I got married and we get pulled back into the ninth house. If you consider Neptune, I ended up going on a three week honeymoon to Hawaii. It was really, we had travel, it was really beautiful. And we bought a house about eight weeks before I got married. So it was in my 12th house perfection year. And, and the moon does connect 
to Neptune and Jupiter, we bought a house and we spent months renovating it. And so that shows up. But marriage is a seventh house topic, guys. And I using perfections in the whole sign house system, you don't see it. If you go to my Placidus chart and indulge me, because we're going to do that for, for this right now, this is where you see the marriage woken up using perfections. Now, let me be clear. By progressions and transits and solar arc directions alone, without even using perfections, my marriage showed very clearly. But this is a video on perfection. So this is where I want to come to help you see that, well, look, in my Placidus chart, Venus is in my 12th house. And Venus does rule my marriage sector. And so the year I got married, I was in a 12th house perfection year. How do you reconcile a 12th house perfection year with one of the best things, one of the most joyful occasions to occur? Venus is in my 12th house in the Placidus chart. And that's how you explain it. And sure enough, that year that I got married, Pluto was trying Venus. Uranus was sextile Venus. Uh, and so that is something I want you to consider if you're advanced enough. If you have planets that uh, change direction, depending on the house system that you use. Okay. So let me go back now. I am not sure how long this video has become, but believe it or not, we are still working. We still have more to do. I'm going to speed it up now because now we've gone through one complete cycle of seeing how each house is woken up. So now I'm going to very quickly take you through some of the other perfection uh, situations. Okay, so give me a second here, guys, to get my bearings. And I have a lot of notes. I really did a tremendous amount of prep work for this. <laughs> okay. So let's keep going around the chart. I'm going to do it a little faster now. So now let's move on to when I was 36 years old and I'm back to a first house perf perfection year. So when I was 37 year, uh, sorry, 36 years old, the year 2010, we had some very different energy. Now the same rulerships applied and I'm not going to go through them again, but that year, what happened in my life was actually a divorce. So in 2010, I was going through the final stages of a divorce. And the transits that year that were activated was Pluto, again, like Pluto was trying Venus when I got married, but Pluto was now squaring Venus in Capricorn. So Pluto is squaring Venus, a planet in my first house. I'm back in my first house perfection year. So Pluto's squaring Venus and transiting Uranus enters Aries for a brief time in that year, just for a little while, end of May to the middle of August. Jupiter enters Aries and conjuncts Venus before going retrograde and transiting Saturn was in Libra opposite my Venus during that perfection year. And that literally talks about the divorce. So you see how both the whole sign house system and the Placidus are starting to kind of work using this, using you know, the techniques here. So 2010, my divorce was finalized. That was my first, uh, other first house perfection year. My second house perfection year after that in 2011, was when I started to build my business and I had a major career and financial opportunity after finalizing my divorce. So I was at uh, the age I was, would have been 37 years old. And I had Jupiter and Taurus that year, eventually conjunct my son in the second house and transiting Uranus was conjunct natal Venus and Uranus rules the second house. So that was a very fortunate time. And then my third house perfection year in the year 2000, when I was 38. Now, this is just so interesting, these next two years. That year, 
I, uh, in 2012, I was 38. And in New York, we had a devastating hurricane that year, Hurricane Sandy. And it just so happened in my third house perfection year that that hurricane occurred. And due to Hurricane Sandy, my entire neighborhood was destroyed. Third house perfection year. And remember in my Placidus chart, these two malefics are actually in my third house. So I can make a case for both here with that again. And so my, my home was destroyed and my neighborhood. So I lost my home. My whole neighborhood was destroyed. And for a couple of months, because I was, I would say homeless, but my daughter would joke and say, no, ma, we're home challenged. Uh, during the time that my house had to be fixed and repaired, we lived with my brother and sister-in-law, third house, waking up again with siblings. And then we ended up living in my uh, parents' basement where I grew up. So we lived, we had to move back to my childhood home, basically, in the year 2012. And that, these two years start, I have to talk about this. I know this is so long, but guys, this becomes really interesting about the transits with the perfections because the transits to Saturn and Mars were extremely difficult, extremely difficult. So in 2012, when I lost my home to Hurricane Sandy, I had transiting Pluto opposite Mars. I had transiting Uranus square Mars. I had Venus go retrograde that year in the sign of Gemini, which was in my third house. And Jupiter did eventually go into my third house. But remember the, uh, the argument of using the whole sign chart puts Mars and Saturn in my third house. And that was a third house perfection year. And so that is a really noteworthy. That is an, is an, demonstration of how a year where Saturn and Mars are active become very challenging. Now let's go back to the whole sign chart and go to my fourth house perfection year right after that in 2013. So in 2013, I had, I'm sorry, this was uh, 20, I had a, uh, so I had a fourth house perfection year and that year was also very difficult. I was able to move back into my home that year. And there were many changes and ongoing construction with the house that year. But it's, um, I had tenants downstairs. And the tenants that lived downstairs, they never came back. There was a permanent removal of people who lived with me. And there was also that year, a terrible crisis for one of my children. Eventually there was healing, but there was a terrible crisis. And so looking at the fourth house, Saturn and Mars, we had transiting Pluto still opposite Mars and my fourth house cusp the nadir at that, that year, transiting Uranus was also square my Mars and my nadir. There was an eclipse conjunct my moon on May 25th of that year. And there, Jupiter eventually went into the fourth house. And so that was a very, very stressful year for me. The third and fourth house years, those, those years, 2012, 2013, extremely difficult. Now in 2015, my next fifth house perfection year, oh, sorry, my fourth house, after my fourth house came my fifth house and when I was 40 years old. In 2014, there was lots of drama raising my children and another crisis with one of my children. So that fifth house perfection year ended up being very difficult. And that fifth house perfection year, when the sun was activated, I had transiting Saturn opposite my sun. And that would have accounted for the difficulties. The following year, when I was... 41 in 2015, when I was in my next sixth house perfection year, I, I lost my full-time job with Tarot.com. So years, 
when did I get the full-time job? I believe it was in my, um, a few years before that it would have been the second house perfection year. So they hired me full-time as an astrologer, astrology writer, content writer. I had health benefits, everything that year, that sixth house perfection year, they, um, took away the full-time job with the health benefits and they replaced it with me being a full-time independent contractor. So I wasn't fired. I didn't lose. Uh, what I lost was the full-time salary basically and the health benefits. So that became a difficult thing. I became totally self-employed for the first time as an astrologer. And that was in 2015, but it ended up becoming very positive. Also in 2015, I got my dog Maple and that is a sixth house energy. That's sixth house perfection year. So now in 2016, I go back to another seventh house perfection year, but this seventh house perfection year became very interesting. Remember Uranus is on the cusp of my seventh house. Well, in 2016, my boyfriend at the time moved in with me and Later on that year, we broke up and he moved out. And so that is very interesting because the transits that were happening, Uranus, transiting Uranus natally is exactly conjunct the, uh, the descendant. But that year, I had Uranus uh, on my ascendant and Uranus was conjunct my ascendant opposite. I was having my Uranus opposition that year. And then Jupiter was also in my seventh house. So you see that ended up being a seventh house perfection year where what was woken up was the difficulties of Uranus being on my descendant natally, because what got triggered was the fact that Uranus was here on my ascendant by transit. And it was exactly opposing natal Uranus and my descendant. In addition, so he suddenly moved in, but then later that year, he suddenly, we suddenly broke up. So Venus rules my seventh house perfection year. And remember I said, if uh, there's a Venus retrograde and you're in a Venus perfection year, it becomes really important. Well, Venus, transiting Venus was retrograde at the exact degree of my natal Venus placement the day, the day we suddenly broke up Uranus. So, so fascinating. Okay. So I'm trying to go faster, guys. Like I said, this was going to be a long instructional tutorial. And I'm starting to realize that I'm probably not going to do the five-year projection in this video because it is getting very long and I'm getting tired. So I want to, I'm going to, if I don't complete what I wanted to complete, I'm going to regret it. So bear with me as I now take you to my next eighth house perfection year. And I'm, I'm losing my notes here, getting a little, here we go. Okay. So my next eighth house perfection year would have been 2017. After the breakup of the man that I was with for nine years, I was healing. I, I had a, and I also had a major crisis again with one of my children that led to healing. I had a lot of years of family crisis, but you know, look at where Mars is. It's in cancer in the fourth house. So I was in a Mars perfection year and the healing, there was such tremendous healing and Uranus was trying Mars still that year. Okay. So I had that uh, I'm sorry, not Uranus trying Mars. In 2017, I had Neptune trying Mars. And Neptune would have been in Pisces in my 12th house. Again, this isolation. I was on the beach almost every day that summer. And Neptune was trying Mars. And there was a big healing with my son um, that year as well. So very, very interesting time. And then I went into my ninth house perfection year. And so my ninth house perfection year, oh my gosh, there, there, were, there were two. I wanted to talk to you about the one in 2006 because I think it is very interesting. I think it's all interesting because the astrology just leaps out. But that year in, in 1990, in 2006, um, I got into Noel Till's master's degree program. And when I got into his master's degree course, 
in 2006, I ended up at, later on going into the next year, I ended up having to quit the program because my husband unexpectedly left me the, the following year. So it was ninth house activation and transiting Uranus was conjunct my natal Jupiter. Jupiter's the ruler here. So we had unexpected ending of academic pursuits, but, but astrology it was literally astrology, a master's course in astrology. And so Uranus was conjunct Jupiter, but Uranus was also square the moon in my ninth house and transiting. Uh, so what happened was I was also that year in that ninth house perfection year defrauded into signing a legal agreement that would actually take me the next several years to get out of. So you can really see how the malefic property of Uranus being square my moon in that perfection year and the fact that my moon is conjunct Neptune natally came to life, it got triggered, I was defrauded and it was very much connected to real estate, property, things like that and, and my um, divorce. So that happened in 2006. And then in 2007, when I entered my next 10th house perfection year, my whole life blew up that year because my husband demanded a divorce. And that year, 10th house perfection year, my family life was destroyed. But I also started my career as an astrologer. And I had to. My whole life blew up. And instead of it being a hobby, it had to become a career. So I started my career as an astrologer officially in 2007. I started studying in, 2000, in 2003. In 2005, I launched my website. But between 2005 and 2007, I didn't need the money. I was married to a wealthy man. I was a stay-at-home mom. But it was in the year 2007 that I had to become an astrologer full-time. So the transits happening were Uranus sextile my midheaven. Saturn was sextile my natal Saturn, ruler of my 10th house. And transiting Pluto actually entered my 10th house from January 26th on and began to square Venus. But Jupiter also entered the 10th house after December. Uh, so really powerful 10th house perfection year that pulls in significations of why I started that career path. I started that career path because my home life was once again destroyed. And with Pluto entering the 10th house and beginning a square to Venus, the divorce energy was there. Later on that year, um, so, so it was between the ninth and the 10th house years that my marriage fell apart. But at the end of that year, that perfection year, I also met the man that I ended up being in that nine year relationship with after my marriage. So now we go to the next 11th house perfection year. And bear with me guys. Okay, so my next 11th house perfection year happened in 20, 2008. And in 2008, when I was in that perfection year, I actually had, uh, so how old was I? Let's see. I would have been, oh my goodness, 34. So that year in 2008, it was an 11th house perfection year. And I actually got significant help from friends and groups, uh, an astrology group, group affiliations, and the internet in starting my career. And I began to build a very successful internet business. This is very in profound. I started my alliance with tarot.com and time passages software. Um, I became the vice president of a, an astrology organization. I did my first astrology lecture on indicators of psychic ability in the birth chart. And there was standing room only at that lecture. I, uh, I, I had so much 11th house activity that ended up defining my career. And 
Neptune, transiting Neptune was in my 11th house, square Mercury. There was a lunar eclipse conjunct natal Neptune. There was a solar eclipse in the 11th house. So um, I'm sorry, the lunar eclipse was in the 11th house. It wasn't conjunct Neptune, but it was in the 11th house. And then there was a solar eclipse in the 11th house and Jupiter entered my 11th house after January of that year. So, so much positive energy happened in that 11th house year, even though it was ruled by Saturn. See how the transits changed the energy there? And it's the writing work. I got the writing work. And if you go back to my chart using the Placidus system, Saturn rules the um, 11th house traditionally, but in the Placidus chart, it's in the third house. Saturn is placed in the third house. So both work, I'm telling you. Then my next 12th house progression, uh, perfection year, 2009. Very, very difficult. It was a year, a very difficult divorce battle, a lot of isolation and behind the scenes situations that year. But um, I, unfortunately, I had to hire a private investigator that year to sweep my house. I, I had to hire a forensic accountant that year. I became very reclusive, but I was still trying to build my business in 2009. And I made great strides building my business that year. I did a lot of writing in solitude in that perfection year. And the, the writing led to the two astrology reports that I wrote that to this day are for sale and I get royalties from. And I also launched my Insightful Astrology weekly video horoscopes that 12th house perfection year, which led to great success and syndication. And, and for many years through Churro.com, those videos were syndicated. And this happened after I was invited to lecture at Villanova University twice about astrology. All of this happened in my 12th house perfection year. So it was a lot of work behind the scenes, but that work behind the scenes led to great success the following year and beyond. And remember, Jupiter is in my 12th house and Jupiter rules my ninth house. The academic world, the publishing, the broadcasting, all of that really came to life that year, but it was a very reclusive year. So then we are going to go back now to So we're actually back to the first house, guys. And I did have more perfection years that I wanted to share with you, but I think I'm going to wind this video down now. Um, I actually think I might stop where I stopped because I finished up with a 12th house perfection year and I've taken you basically around the wheel twice, different years of my life. And I do hope that this long tutorial helped you really see how to bring the astrology to life and to work with annual perfections and transits correctly. And I'm going to do another video separately where I will be looking at a five-year predictions using annual pre perfections with transits. But I'm going to make that video separate because this video has been long enough and I'm ready to stop talking. I think I'm about to lose my voice to tell you the truth. So thank you guys for watching. Please let me know in the comments how you experienced this presentation and if it was helpful and if you're able to apply it now to your own charts for learning with combining perfections and transits. All right, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.